500 years ago, the mass distribution of books set off an intellectual explosion with the coming of the Renaissance. But today, with the internet and ubiquitous computing, we're witnessing an even greater revolution. First of all, it's global. It's not just for the elites, it's for everyone. Second, it's interactive. Ideas get dissected. This is democracy in action. This revolution is just the first stage in our mastery of machine intelligence. And it's changing not just our ideas, but our relationships with each other. So here I am, dancing in a virtual world. Now, my dancing partners are real but they're actually located several hundred miles from here, so I'm really dancing with their virtual three-dimensional image transmitted to me in real time. And simultaneously, my image is being transmitted to them. This new technology is called tele-immersion. Three-dimensional technologies like tele-immersion have virtually limitless possibilities. They could be the evolutionary successor of the telephone and might even reduce air travel. Now at the present time, the technology is still in its earliest stages. But you can imagine in the future having an entire business conference in a virtual world. Imagine celebrating a virtual Christmas party with friends and relatives gathered together in a virtual living room even if they're thousands of miles away. Imagine a virtual television program. It's just as if you're sitting right there in the audience or right there running on the playing field of an exciting football game. And what makes this a credible scenario is the unprecedented growth we are already seeing in online communication. Facebook, MySpace, and instant messaging are moving into the mainstream. And with virtual reality, it goes one step further. We can create virtual worlds and virtual selves, avatars who are not limited by real world constraints. Online games like Second Life allow us to create worlds where everything and anything is possible. These are worlds of endless self-reinvention, where we can change our shape, our sex, and even our species. As for my avatar, I decided to lose a few years. This is not just escapist entertainment. People actually live in these worlds. They even fall in love. Before we knew each other, I chose a plot of land near a nice looking build. It turned out the build was his. Chris had built something that was very unconventional, very curvy, very futuristic, and that appealed to me. It also happened to be in a lovely setting, uh, a nice green area with some streams running through it. I'd scripted a, a brain to control the house, you know, tint the windows, lock the door, even made a, a swimming pool appear from underground when I wanted it. And uh, Elaine used to pop over on the pretense to say hi to brain. The first time we ever went out, we did have a date. Uh, it was in a uh, secluded, romantic island in Second Life. Yeah. You know, we hung out and chatted and, you know, acted silly. Six months after their first meeting in the virtual world, Elaine Wartell and Chris Edwards got married. For real. 
Second Life has changed my life in a lot of ways. For one thing, I live in England now instead of the United States. For another thing, I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And for a third thing, I have a new career. Elaine earns real money selling virtual products in a virtual world. My main business is an accessories business. I make jewelry and shoes and handbags and things for avatars. How you look is a really important part of being there. So I do make a living. In fact, I make more than I ever did in my previous career now. So that, that's amazing to me that it's come that far. And it's really wonderful. I'm surprised how quickly I'm getting drawn into this world. In just four years, Second Life has grown from a few thousand enthusiasts to more than five million residents. By 2020, there'll be an entire three-dimensional universe in cyberspace with virtual countries and governments, virtual schools and universities, virtual property and stock markets, and virtual families and friends. Virtual reality is going to become more and more like real reality, but have the advantage that I can share a virtual reality environment with someone else, even if they're hundreds of miles apart, and we can be in the same environment and we can be other people and we can change environments quickly and it has a lot of advantages of real reality. I think in 10 years, things like Second Life will, will become as prevalent as email is now. And I think virtual worlds will, will become a similar way for people to get together, and communicate, collaborate. I can see in the future that it's going to be so much more capable than it is today and I'm going to love it. When I was a child, we read about a fictional character called Walter Mitty. By daytime, he was a typical middle-class, milquetoast, very boring individual. But at night, he had very fierce fantasies where he could live out wild dreams. In some sense, all of us are Walter Mitty's. But with Second Life and virtual reality, we'll be able to actually live out our fantasies. And in the future, the lines between our virtual fantasies and the physical reality will increasingly blur. One notion is that virtual reality interfaces might simply be integrated into the human body. We could have a display built into any of a number of layers within the eye or into the optic tract somewhere or indeed into the brain itself. But these possibilities raise some rather disturbing questions. What happens if we assume so many different identities that we begin to lose our own sense of identity? What happens if we begin to prefer virtual social networks over our real social networks? And the family. Will the family suffer if we spend more time with our virtual family than our real one? If you have more than one avatar, if you have more than one personality, it could impact very much on how you see yourself. To a certain extent, human beings have always had multiple personalities. One would be different, I'm different as a daughter, to as a sister, to as a friend, to as a colleague. We all adapt to the context of the, of the, the time and the, and the place that we are with the group of people that we are. So different people bring out different things in you. But it may be that when you have these avatar worlds, that is magnified tenfold. What can I do for you? Need help? Already, more than 30 million people worldwide spend an average of 20 hours per week in virtual worlds. And some, like Sarah Rogers, actually prefer...